Good evening, everyone. Welcome to season four, episode one. Okay, four seasons, four years. I've been doing this. This is this is crazy. It's a good thing. It's always a good thing. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody had a great New Year's. Uh, it was it was all. It's always great to relax. Always great. Had a good time. Didn't do a whole lot, which which is always a good thing. Uh, that 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 the. Can't can't put money on that. Really can't really can't put money on that. Got some things to talk about tonight. Um, we're gonna kind of dive right in here. Um, just want to let you guys know. Uh, you know, it's you guys are fantastic. I want to thank you for a great, fantastic three seasons on Rotor Talk Live specifically. Um, all you guys showed up. Um, let's greet everybody. Bill from Metro Drones, John Olson. Um, Steve Mack, uh, Johnny's here, Trey Sharpton, Sam Burns, Leonard Oglesby. Let's see who else. Uh, Bill from Metro Drones, Fly Zone Drones. Uh, okay, I think we – Drone Master. I think – in oh, DeMarco is here. Welcome, DeMarco. Glad you're here tonight. Look, Arco Drone Solutions, welcome, Art. Thank you for being here. Michael Wright, I am doing well. Jeff Voigt is here. All right. We got the Navy here, so we're fine. All right, Jeff. Okay. Um, got some things we want to talk about tonight. Um, you know, got a, got a lot going on. And the first thing I want to call you guys' attention to, you know, uh, I had recently done a video about remote ID. And you guys know that the FAA recently has co have come to a decision on remote ID, what all is going to be involved. I got two things to talk about about that tonight. And they're both um, the first one's just kind of like an FY. The second one's uh, has a little bit more uh, meat on the bones for you. Okay. Now I'm going to share my screen here. Now, um, believe it or not, I came across this today. Um, they already, Remote ID already has a patent, uh, which is pretty incredible. Um, Shu, Shugahara from Arisend already has a United States patent. You can see it right here. Um, the United States Patent Office awarded what seems to be a first remote ID, remote ID for drones patent to Kenja Shugahara, CEO and founder of Era Ascend, an Oregon-based UAS research and development company. Um, this is just, you know, this is kind of like more like an, an FYI kind of a thing. But um, it's interesting to see this, uh, you know, that somebody's already come out with this already. Obviously, they have been working on a solution, you know, and this is this is this is what we got there. Jeff, thank you very much for the for the super chat. Appreciate that. And and Bill from Metro Jones, thank you so much for that as well. OK, so th that's what we have with that. And, you know, and, and I kind of think that that is interesting here. And let's go to I have another article I'm going to share with you guys here in a second. OK, Um you know, the whole thing, you know, about remote ID, you know, it didn't surprise me the decision that was one of the things that did surprise me about this before before I bring the next article up. One of the things that did surprise me was that the um, how the FAA took into account uh, the um, uh, what are, how the FAA took in, into account our comments. OK. In, in coming up with their decisions. Uh, Mid-Valley Drones, Mr. Stephen Fox. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the super chat. You guys are starting off 2021 on a great note for me, okay? It really impressed me that the FAA um, has, you know, stepped up to the plate and they looked at our comments, okay? And, and I thought that was good. Now, I came across this article. You guys probably know Google Wing, Okay. Um, that's, uh, it's called alphabet, it, alphabet and Google, the same thing. And they have, they have drones that actually do deliveries. Okay. And I know they pioneered this in Australia. I think they're doing this in Virginia right now as well too. And this article was kind of unusual for, you know, Google's getting involved with some antitrust stuff and, you know, they're, they're talking about it being a monopoly along with Facebook and Twitter and, breaking them up and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Now, Google's wing warns that new drone laws may have unintended consequences for privacy. Now, this is a real sticking point. Okay. 
I believe it's on pages 111 to 114 because I read through about 100 pages of, of, the, of, the, of the report. Um, you guys got to have have either a cup of coffee or a nice Coca-Cola sitting on your desk when you're reading through that because it's a lot of heavy duty reading. It's it's more than it's more than that. I think it's about 400. I went actually read through about 100 pages of it. And basically the 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 gist of this article here is that it's we're, the 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 privacy we won't have that privacy. And I know you heard Marcus and I and Ron talk about that when when we talked about first talked about remote ID and that was one of the concerns that we had and when I had Brendan on that was one of the things that, that we really had a concern about is, it, it, it is this. Now, you know, I'm gonna, I'll go through the article here. Now, you can see that's what a wing drone looks like, which is real interesting. And those are flying. There's no FPV view. Pilots are at a central center. Uh, they don't see a thing when they're flying. So, yeah, it's, yeah, that's it's it's pretty okay. Now, the, the gist of the article is here, and you can see here I'm shocked. Uh, that a company being investigated for antitrust concerns of abusing its power on the internet would recommend the FAA ditch its newest radio frequency ID program for internet-based tracking, okay? Which, as you know, that's the FAA turned that down for remote ID, all right? Um, you know, and they listed the cost of adding a cellular modem to a drone, the cost of paying for monthly cellular data plan, the lack of reliable cellular coverage, okay? They, they listed all these reasons here is why they didn't do this but um you know there's a link here and i'll drop this article um you know in the in the comment section so you guys can go ahead and have this but the one thing here um this allows the drone to be identified as it flies over without necessarily sharing the drone's complete flight path or flight history and that information which can be more sensitive is not displayed to the public and only available to law enforcement to have proper credentials and a reason to need that information now, um, you know, then you have, uh, here's wing on, okay. But the thing about license plates is you have to be within eye shot to see it, okay. Now, you know, the, the one big thing here with this is um, the FAA also clear the broadcast remote ID is just a first step. An initial framework suggesting internet-based remote ID might still be an option in the future, okay. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff with this. And I'm going to go ahead and, and drop this um, in the in 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 the chat here. But I wanted to make sure you guys had an understanding of this because I think you know I think it's important to understand what's going on here. Okay, um, yeah, Johnny, right? They did listen somewhat, and you know the jury is still out. I mean, you know, I'm still trying to digest some of this. You know, initially I was pretty positive about it, but after reading a lot more of this stuff, you know, it's like, I don't know, I, you know, I, I, now we do have time and that, that's one of the things that I wanted to try to get across to you. That's one other point I wanted to get before we move on here. Okay. Um, we're looking at about two and a half years from the time they have, uh, I believe manufacturers have um, 18 months to come up with solutions for this add-on module for your drones. And we as hobbyists and pilots have a year to comply. So we're looking at two and a half years before this actually takes fruition. So, you know, stay tuned with all this. Um, I believe you're gonna see that in it. What I believe you're gonna see, for example, with DJI, okay, with the Mavic 3, which will be coming out this year, you're gonna see their remote ID is going to be implemented in that drone. It's going to be part of it, all right? And that's one of the big reasons why DJI held it back. One of the reasons. There's other ones. Or you know, um, you know, Mavic Three for for another another time and another place. Okay. So that's just. I just want you guys get you guys up to speed. What we know. Um, Ray Kelly, welcome. Glad you're here. Yeah, you worry about in two years. You're right, Ray. It's 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 two it's two and a half years. You know, there's no need to worry about it right now. And I'm going to go out and say this, you know, you want to get a Mavic 3 and spend, you know, if it's $1,800, go for it. All right. It's going to have the technology on there that you're going to need anyway. You know, and, and new drones that are coming out this year. Go for it. Ha, ha, you know, highly, highly, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Okay. Now, 
you know, on this channel, you know, I am a big proponent of other channels out here. Okay. You know that, you know, that's one thing for me, you know, I, I, you know, Ron's channel, Marcus's channel, you know, other ones, you know, Kelly when he's on here. Okay. One of the other ones and and, and I wanted, I wanted to call your attention to this one because I thought it was, thought it was, thought it was real good here. Um, did have it up, but I clo accidentally closed that panel. Okay. Come on. Now, you know, one of my other, one of my other go-to guys that I just absolutely love and, you know, I've had the chance to hang with him several times as Rick Smith. R Rick is just a great guy. Absolutely love him. Now, he did a great video, and I encourage you guys to go ahead and watch it on the new Sony Airpeak drone. Um, you know, and one of the things I know, you know, for after having watched it, and one of the things that I could tell you right away, one of the things that, that you, can, you can take to the bank with this is, you know, Sony's going to have <laughs> – you know, their their processor and their camera is going to be top notch here. OK, really, you know, it, there's going to be no question about that. OK, the big question is going to come with the actual drone part, the mechanics of the drone part. And well, I encourage you to watch Rick's video because Rick always does a good, thorough job in discussing this. You know, this is something springtime, spring ish is when we're going to see something like this. So stay tuned for this. Watch Rick's video. Rick does a fantastic job on this. Um, you know, and one of the things, one of the things for me, you know, on these days, I'm going to do a video on what I like about other drone reviewers. They're, they're, they're be the best qualities of each of them. The one thing that really stands out for me with Rick, of course, besides his enthusiasm like a 13 year old, which is fantastic, is his background. He is an electrical engineer by trade. And because of that, that gives him a lot of unique insight into the how these drones are made, how the you know the physical, mechanical operating type of things work. So stay tuned for that. Okay, um, you know this drone. I think I think this is going to be this is going to be a, a winner for Sony. Um, you know, I, I look at it. I look at it a lot like probably Skydio. So don't expect too much in the way of flying this, but. I think it's going to, I think it's going to be good. No control in the air peak can only be a selfie camera drone. That's, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did see that. So, you know, while that, that's going to be, it, it's a step in the right direction, you know, and remember Skydio, their, their first attempt, that kind of was the same thing. Okay. It was autonomous and it only really took, um, you know, it kind of did the same thing. So stay tuned for that. But I wanted to call your guys attention to that. I, I thought that was important here. Okay. Um, now the other thing, and I know I I have been I have been remiss in getting a, a video out about the the Mini Two firmware update, and we're going to go over that right now. I wanted to wanted to share some of the you know a lot of you guys have done it already, but let's go over it just in case you haven't, because I wanted to make sure everybody knew what we're what's what's going on here. Um, improves overall stability. What's new with the version? Added zoom to photo mode. Added 48, 50, 60 frames per second shooting frame rate for 2.7K video. Optimized Wi-Fi Bluetooth connectivity, providing a faster and more stable connection. Increased flight stability in some scenarios. Fixed issue, abnormal color appeared in panoramic DNG photos. Fixed rare issue, abnormal texture appeared in the upper left corner in 4K videos. Added features require DJI Fly version 1.2.2 or later. For Android users, visit DJI official website. Okay, um, just wanted to go over these things, and and I and I owe, and I owe you guys a video, and, and I will be working on that. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, sort of had a death in the family. Um, it was my ex father in law had passed away this past weekend, and um, you know, I spent some talk talking talking to my kids about this, and and it was hard. Um, it was a very good man. I uh, was a pastor for over 40 years. 
Um, you know, he was, he, he really was, was just heart and soul, uh, loved his family, loved the kids, um, loved God, w was just a great man. And it ha it happened very quickly what had happened to him. And, um, it was kind of a shock and it, it was a shock to see that. And it was something, you know, to have to absorb that. So, um, you know, I, I've been, you know, that's one of the things, you know, I, I've had a lot going on and, and that was one of the things. That, that took up some time. So I wanted to want to apologize. I haven't been cranking out the videos like I normally do, but I'm planning on planning on, on amping that up over the weekend here. So so that's where we are. I'm gonna get a um, we're gonna we're gonna do a video on that because I always like to do a video after firmware update just to make sure everything's fine because you never know. And that's one of the things I, I, I want to tell everybody and stress this to everybody, okay, is you know. After you do a firmware update, all right, and, and this is one thing, and I think, I don't know if Lauren's in the chat or not tonight, but uh, Blue Skyver's here, welcome. Yeah, thank you, appreciate that. Um, you know, one of the things that, that Lauren really preach, preaches, and I agree with him 100%, is when you do something like this, when you have a firmware update, okay, you should, you should, do, you should do your calibrations again. Do an IMU calibration, do a gimbal calibration, compass calibration, also a remote controller calibration. The, the, those should all be automatic every time after you do a firmware update, okay? Uh, it's, it should be a no-brainer, but I wanna make sure you guys know that and understand that. I think that's, that's an, important, an important thing to, to, remember, to remember that. Okay, and the other thing down here in Florida, it's winter time in Florida. What can I say? Our low, we're getting lows in the 40s at night. So yeah, and that's that's chilly down here. All right, that that's that's really kind of chilly. Anyway, all right, got some more news here. And you know, one of the other things that there's been a lot of talk about has been the DJI FPV drone. Well, got a got a new picture, a couple of new pictures. You guys have probably seen them, but we're, I'm going to share them anyway. To make sure because some of you may have not seen that now now here's the picture of of what this looks like and size wise i mean you look at the depth and the don't think that this thing is massive okay it's not all right it's just from the perspective as you take a look at things okay you know where that guy's sitting in the back and being on a table and everything so just to kind of give you perspective on that. Now, the other thing that was released was, and they think this is just a display demo of what the controller's going to be for it. So, um, and our buddy Acetalev had this up on up on his page. So, I wanted to go ahead and get this out here. They're talking like what the what what I've been hearing is that this is going to be released, and this is not really a segue, but CES 2021. Okay. CES 2021 is going to be virtual, all right? And you would think that they would have a fantastic rate, okay? Or maybe not even have a rate at all for this. But of course not. They're charging for this. And I'm going to take a pass on this because you know what? I, I, I know after, you know, because I know I've talked to Ken. I've talked to Billy. I'm, you know, Marcus went last year to it. You know, there's nothing like physically being there talking to the reps from these companies, getting a feel for the product, what's going on. So, you know, pass, okay? Pass on a virtual CES 2021. Hopefully 2022, you know, we've got COVID-19 behind us. Um, you know, no more pandemics in sight and hopefully can, um, you know, go to one in person. That would be That would be a nice thing. So let's stay tuned for that. Of course, anything comes out of CES 2021, you know, my my eyes and ears are going to be to the ground. So we'll be paying attention to what's going on with that. Um, it looks like there's going to be a foldable drone. If you look at it closely, it looks like um, hedges in the front. Bill, we talked about it on Sean. Oh, OK. Wow. OK. All right. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, you're right. That kind of does, I think you're right. I, I, I agree with you. That's going to be very interesting to see how this thing works. Um, very interesting. You know, but for me, I, and, I, and I have to say this for me, I'm the kind of person that I don't, I, I can tell you right now, you know, unless these goggles have changed and things have changed, I physically need to see the drone. I have some spatial 
distance kind of thing. And, you know, for me, you know, in, you know, I get disoriented very easy with something like that. So that's why I, I don't consider doing FPV. But if you guys do, you know, this is an option that's available. It's something that, um, you know, DJI is coming out with it. I mean, you can't really, you can't really say no, say no to that. So, you know, that's something for you guys to consider. Now, you know, I know most of you have seen, you know, both of my videos. I have the Femi is officially have, has come back. They they did answer my emails. Femi is coming out with a Femi Mini. Okay, um, people are calling it Femi Mini, Femi X8 Mini. Not sure. Okay, um, I didn't have it pulled up, but I'm gonna bring up that picture now. Some people, you know, I've said I, I've said for me. I'm going like, well, you know, that photo kind of looks a little photoshopped and I got some flack for that. But I think it, I, I got some flack for saying a photo looks photoshopped. OK, just people were nit people were nitpicking it in my last video. And I don't know why, guys. I have absolute Stephen Ewing. Welcome. Thank you for for showing up, my friend. Glad you're here. Um, all right. Let's go ahead. Let me see if I can bring that up. I know I got it here somewhere okay there there it is all right okay now femi x8 mini <laughs> um you know whether this is photoshop or real i don't know but the good news is and here's what i found out um, Femi was very forthcoming with information, which is always fantastic. Okay. Um, they said, um, testing models will be available in two months, which I think is great because I think they're, I think they're pretty far along in the process. Now I have seen several of my, several people on the, in the Femi group have told me that they've known some one who I know pretty well has told me that this has been, you know, to him, he's known about this for a while. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if I'm late to the party or what, but anyway, all right. The, the camera looks all, I'm going to say this, it looks similar to what we see from the mini. Okay. It's not exactly the camera from the mini, but it looks similar to it. And, um, you know, I think what they're trying to do is they have seen the runaway success that DJ has, DJI has had with the mini and they want to try to replicate it. All right. Now, I did have a chat with Marcus and Ron about this. And, you know, one of the things and I agree with Marcus, it's going to have to be competitively priced. OK, um, you know, they can't go in with, you know, people are estimating this might probably be about three hundred and forty nine dollars. OK, they, they got to do it like two ninety nine. OK, in order to in order to try to steal some of that market from DJI. Because it's not going to work, okay? Because if they price this at three forty nine, what it's you know by the time you spend just a little bit more money, you're you can buy the mini too, no fly market, but you can buy the mini too. So I think you know, <coughs> Feeney's going to have to have to be very aggressive as far as pricing is concerned. Now one of the other things is you know, and and I've seen and one of the you know, I, you know, I, I asked the question of the day on this. What would you like to see on it? And almost everybody, I've, I've seen all, the majority of responses, people have said they want to see the horizon tilt issue fixed on that, okay? Um, you know, not, <laughs> you know, not have to deal with it coming out of the box, okay? Because we all know both the 2018 and the 2020 versions of the X8, you know, horizon tilt, you know, Fortunately, you know, mine's, mine's disappeared. I haven't flown the Femi for a while, but, you know, it, it hasn't been there. You know, my big issue is that loss of transmission signal. Hopefully that isn't take, that has been taken care of on this. And, you know, there, there's, I hope Femi has got it right. And, you know, we're going to find out in short order. Um, you know, I was saying April, I'm thinking maybe March, we may see this here. Okay. Now be forewarned. Okay. This is probably going to come from Banggood, and if it's not coming from China, expect to wait. That's just how it works with Banggood and Gearbest. Okay, you guys that have have done this before 
have, 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 have been around in this rodeo once or twice, you know what the drill is. You know how this works with them. But I think it's it's going to be a good drone. I actually saw some concern. Somebody had posted, you know, they don't want this to weigh under 249 grams. They want it to weigh more than 249 grams. So it'll be stable in the wind. The X8 is stable in the wind as it is, the X8 2020. Um, so they're hoping it, it's a little beefier than that. But, you know, then again, having that 249 grams or less, you know, you're going to be able to fly in a lot more countries without having to, you know, get licenses and regula pass regulations and all that kind of good stuff. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more on that. Um, wait and get her from B&H Photo. Fast and easy. Yeah, you're right, Sam. That's a good. That's a good point. That's a. That's a very good point. B and H photo, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, Sam. B and H photo. That's something a lot of people don't think of when they're looking at buying drones. Okay, um, you know, a lot of people will go to Amazon or Best Buy or get it from directly from the manufacturer. But B and H photo has always. I mean. You're not going to pay extra for it. Their shipping, I think, is very reasonable. I've bought a number of items from them, and I've been very pleased with the service from them. I know you see everybody has seen that ad from B&H Photo, but they actually have some great customer service there. They really do take good care of people. Um, their shipping is fast. It's very reasonable. It's not exorbitant. And I think that's why they do such a good business, okay? They they actually have a good customer service department. I mean, I have, have never been been disappointed. So, you know, we're going to see the Mini sooner rather than later. And I think that's probably going to be the first thing we're going to see in 2021 as far as, as drones are concerned. Although the Sony drone may be around-ish at the same time. I would not expect to have seen that. the Well, Femi would not go to like CES 2020. Uh, 2021, they don't usually attend events like that. Um, you know, drone manufacturers like, you know, the smaller ones like Femi or Hudson, you don't usually see them at those kind of events. Um, you know, so now, you know, and, and I actually had some, you know, people have, have talked a little bit about the X dynamics. Okay. I have not heard a word. Okay. Now I was told, you know, I was kept on an email list to, to be kept in the loop on things, on when things are going to be available for the X Dynamics, uh, for the Evolve 2, there's been nothing. So I think I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to have some time. I'm going to have some time this weekend. I think I'm going to email them and see what goes on with that. Um, yeah, B&A service is really good, even for Canada Blue Sky. You're right. They are great. And, and, and I think that's a great option for a lot of people, especially in North America. Um, they do a great job. So, you know, if you're in North America, you know, it, I can't say enough good things about them. They, they've always they've been very good for me, and their follow up has been great, and their shipping has been spot on. So I, I have absolutely no complaints. Um, so that's where we're at. Mini is probably going to be here sooner rather than later for Femi. So stay tuned on that. I'm excited about that. Um, you know, there are a lot of things for as much as we knock the X8 2020 um, from Femi. You know, there's a lot of things that, that, that they've done right on that. So stay tuned. Uh, look forward to that. I know you guys will. Um, you know, I'm excited about it. I think they're, I think they, they're going to do, um, do a great job with that. Um, one of the other things that I, I came across and I wanted to share with you guys today was, um, now don't get excited if you see if you see this okay apple is not coming out with a drone however they're working on a high-tech modem for drones um according according to a recent patent patent filing um i came across this because everybody has been saying you know oh you know they need to get into drones well you know it's like well gopro made some good cameras so they decided to get into drones we all kind of know how gopro turned out but they're completely different they're a lot smaller than apple okay um, but you know, and people are saying, you know, don't get ex too excited about this. This doesn't really mean a lot because a lot of tech companies will put stuff out like this for drones and, and you know, make parts for drones and that kind of thing. But you know, maybe it's a step in the direction. Who knows? It, it could be, it, 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 it could be something there. I, I don't know. Yeah, um, you know, that get man, that is exactly. You know, we've been saying that. I've been saying that ever since I started, 
my channel, <laughs> you know, about Apple buying DJI. Now, wouldn't that be a nice thing? I think it would be great. And, you know, I think it would be a great thing. <laughs> that's all. That's what I'm going to say. You know, I was going to say about moving production facilities, all that kind of good stuff. But, but no, I'm just going to. I'm just going to kind of leave that there as far as that's concerned. <laughs> Can I pre-order? Ron. <laughs> yeah, Ron, sign me up. I'll be right behind you on that one. Um, just don't want to make sure what color it comes in. And if it comes in, you know, if it, it has a, the, the regular size or the large size. Um, and, you know, it's a premium for, for certain colors. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I I don't know about that. I just I, I just I don't know what to say. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you know, forgotten drones. You know, one of the things. You know, let's not say I'm back up here a second. You know, Mavic Three. <laughs> you know, where nobody nobody's really talking a lot about it right now, but. It's on the horizon, okay? Now, I've said, and, and, I, and I can still stick with this, the earliest we're going to see that is, is probably going to be this summer, all right? I don't foresee it coming any sooner than this summer. I would say probably the latest we're going to see it is probably September. I would say the earliest we're probably going to see it is end of July, beginning of August, um, kind of a time frame. Um, you know, what we're going to see on it, who knows? There's just pure speculation at this point. Um, pricing, again, pure speculation. My guess, it's going to be a tad under two grand. I think we're probably going to see $1,850, $1,900. Okay. I think it's really going to be pushing that upper edge towards 2K. But I think what you're going to get for it, and this is the thing, okay. And when the Mavic 2 came out, right away, first thing, a price. Bill, I, you know, that's too expensive. You know, I, I can't do that. Will there be a Mavic Air 3 this year, Ron? <laughs> only, only if you build us one, Ron. <laughs> but seriously, okay, the first thing I get and I hear when a new drone comes out, it's too much money. It's too much money. You know, so, you know, or, you know, we're going from one iteration to an X. We, you know, we went from the original Mavic Pro to the Mavic 2. That's too much money. That's too much of a price increase, Bill. I, I, I can't. And, you know, and, and I get it. And I understand for a lot of you who are maybe on fixed incomes, I understand that. All right. And, 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 and I get it. All right. But understand with that increase in price also comes an increase in features. OK, so, you know, the, the, the increase in price is justified by another equal increase in features, I think, and I believe. I mean, you know, and I'll give you an example here. And I think this was, I'm in a past life, I've been in IT most of my career, but I actually spent a few years, believe it or not, I sold cars. I really did. I sold Hondas for several years. Salesman of the month twice, twice. Okay. Yeah. Bill, here. And no, I wasn't a slimy salesman. And I, I did. I thought I did a real good job. I was told I had excellent product knowledge. All right, and that's one of the things that sold. I, naturally, it sold. Hondas really sold themselves. It, they were an easy, very easy car to sell. All right. Anyway, all right. Digressing here. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, Apple will disable your jump battery, so you have to buy a new one. <laughs> tech. That's that's a good one. Matt Cundiff, welcome. Glad to see you here. I just just saw you here. Place it here is here. Okay. Great to see you guys. All right. Anyway, you know, with it, with with you know, Ron and I, you know, Ron came down, got to meet, got to meet, got to meet him finally, and got to meet his wife. And we went, we went out to the beach, and Ron brought his Mavic Pro, and I had the Mavic 2 Pro. And we were flying towards the sun, and and I looked through Ron's uh Ron's view on it. I think he had his phone. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Or his I think he had his iPad. And then I had my iPad with my Mavic 2 and he looked at the difference in his jaw. You can almost hear it hit hit the sand, okay? <laughs> at the beach. 
because there was such a difference in, 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 in contrast in the low light capabilities of the Mavic 2 versus the original Mavic Pro. It was, it was a huge difference. You could see it there. And it was, it was, it was to the naked eye, you could see it, how, how big, big of a difference it was. And, you know, and that basically, and, and Ron, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, you know, it was seeing something like that that really kind of sold you on the Mavic 2 Pro because of the low light capabilities. Because as we all know, Ron is the Jedi master of sunsets, okay? There's, there's you know, we're, we're, all, we're all underneath Ron, okay, as far as that's concerned. And seriously, Ron takes some awesome sunsets. He really does. Definitely. Go through his channel. Look at some of his stuff. He he excels at that. He does a fantastic job at that. So definitely check that out on Ron's channel. Okay. So, you know, we got the Mavic 3 to look forward to sometime this year. Um, you know, like I said, X Dynamics, I haven't heard anything from them. I'm going to reach out to them, see if I hear something. If I do, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Um, the V-Copter. What a disaster that was. I think a lot of people got their money back on that. I mean, granted, COVID-19 really kind of screwed things up for a lot of companies. And I think it kind of screwed that that one up. Marcus actually said he saw, he was able to pick up the controller. He said the controller felt like it was coming from one of those knockoff $150 drones that was super, super, super cheap. Uh, Ron Brown is a sunset master, but Johnny Drone Flyer is gaining. Yeah, Johnny Drone Flyer is gaining on him, right? That's a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what it is this year. Okay, we have our sunsets have sucked. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna come out and say it. All right, I don't know why. I, I seriously don't know why. Our sun, you know, we face west. The back of my house faces west. What a great opportunity for sunsets and you guys have seen them the past couple of years i've taken some good ones why haven't i posted any lately because i haven't had any to post seriously we have not had really good sunsets this year i don't know what it is last year was much better let's say i'm and i'm talking 2019 not 2020 but 2019 okay maybe it was covid19 i don't know i mean i just it was 2020 all right I, I seriously don't know what. Uh, oh, Ron, Marcus and I are taking pre-orders on it. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you Ron's email address. And Ron, make sure you list your PayPal address in, in the chat so everybody can, can send you money for pre-orders. And Marcus, too. <laughs> <laughs> you'll 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 be you'll be able to buy a lot of accessories with that run. Oh, shh, shh, I'm not supposed to say that. So, yeah. So you know that's what we go, got going on for 2021 right now. Um, you know, I have not my ears been to the ground. I haven't heard you know other things. You know, everybody's waiting on on this DJI FPV drone. It's probably going to make its debut at CES. Price wise, I've got no idea, guys. I, I, I have no idea where we're going to be at that. I think it's probably going to – I couldn't even say. I, I really couldn't. Um, Greg Pittman, welcome. Glad to see you here. Uh, Manny Navarro is here too. Um, Marcus is here. Good to see you, Marcus. Yeah. See, I don't – you know, I, I can't say anything as far as what I think because I know I've had several, several people ask me about – what we're going to get price wise with that. Oh, I know one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, you know, and again, it's with remote ID and I had it down and I was going to talk about it when we talked about remote ID, but I forgot. Okay. You know, I had so many comments about saying, well, I'm not going to, I don't need remote ID. I can go fly anyway, you know, being, being a rebel. All right. Well, you can be a rebel all you want, but the only place you're going to be able to fly it is at a sanctioned field. Uh, an AMA sanctioned field. Okay. Now AMA's put out somewhat of a response and I'm waiting for them to put out a in-depth response to this. So stay tuned for that. But, you know, AMA, they do a fantastic job. Okay. I'm a member of them because I actually have a side hobby that um, you may get to see every now and then. Okay. Um, you know, flying remote control planes and, and cars. You've seen the cars 
but um, I might, you might get to see me fly a plane or two on the, on the channel. Who knows that that could be coming. So stay tuned for that. That's a, that's a teaser. That, that's what's known. That's what's known as, as a, as a teaser guys. So, um, but anyway, so, you know, that's where I'm at for tonight. <laughs> I knew <laughs> there sure as heck isn't, you know, good things that they're, they're, you know, we're, we're, we're starting the year off here. All right. Um, and one of the things I did, I actually did, I actually did some rearranging in my room here. Um, it needed it. I had stuff all over the place. It was a colossal mess. I've straightened some things up, um, gotten more organized in here, which this room also serves as my um, office, um, work office as well. So, you know, I got to have, I got to have access to my work stuff, which is, which is, which is good. But, you know, I've made, I made some things for that. So we're, we're good now. I got that. I got that. I got that squared away. Um, you know, got some things lined up for this year. And, you know, one of the things, um, you know, I sp had, a, had a nice text conversation with Rick Smith. All right. And I'm going to be trying to get Rick on the show, um, you know, and, and I, and I want to have another show again um, when we're getting closer to Mavic 3 time, unless these guys are under NDA. I hope they're not. But I, I want to get Rick. I, I would like to get Kelly. I'd like to get Billy. I'd like to get Ken Dono, um, maybe Bill Thomas, Ron and Marcus. Have a lot of us on. Have a great panel on to be able to talk about, um, you know, because it's going to be a significant drone that's going to come out. Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to have capabilities that will rival possibly and inspire. Um, you know, like I said, it's going to be, you know, it's going to push the $2,000 price range. And I think it's going to have an incredible camera on it. I think it's also going to have a switchable camera on it as well, too. That's just a couple of, couple of my thoughts on, on that. Um, as far, as far as that's concerned. So, um, I'll just check the chat out here. I asked Film Post about Mavic 3. He replied, he has no info, but even if he did, he wouldn't be able to say, okay. Um, check Facebook Messenger. I sure will, Ron. I sure will. Um, let's see. Um, okay. If you fly without remote ID, they have to catch you like speed. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to be on the end of that right now with the FAA. That's just uh, I'd want to dot my eyes and cross my T's with them. So that's just that's just one of, that's just one of those things. Um, that's really it for tonight. Um, that's all I have. That's all I have planned. Um, like I said, you know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the Mini Two firmware update taken care of and uh, flight taken care of, so you guys can you guys can see that. And I always do one after that, so we're gonna get that done. Um, I got some, uh, you know, I, I want to get the Femi back up. I want to see how things are, things are going with that. It's been a while since I've, since I've taken the Femi out. So I want to do that. Um, we've actually had some not windy weather. It's been, been cooler, but it's not been windy. I was kind of waiting for some wind cause I kind of want to do, I want to get some moderate wind so I can get the mini two up to see how it behaves in like a moderate wind. So, but uh, you stick around in Florida, you'll probably get it coming up any day now. So I'm thinking we'll, we'll, we'll probably, we'll probably do that. That'll probably be coming, coming up soon. Um, what about the Hubson three and the Femi SE 2021? Um, you know, I haven't heard anything, um, regarding a Hubson Zeno three. Um, you know, I don't know if Marcus or Ron has heard anything about that. I've heard nothing about that. And as far as a 2021 for Femi, I don't th I don't see Femi coming out with more than one drone in a year. I really just don't. I don't think they have the kind of capabilities, say like a DJI would be to do it. I could be wrong. They could be. They could do something like that. I don't know. Um, hey, Bill, we're having a Sebastian Florida meetup on Saturday, March 20th. Hope you can make it. Okay. Educate me, Ray. <laughs> Where's Sebastian at? Okay. I'm sorry. I've lived in Florida 11 years. I don't know. Uh, um, you know, or just it, drop it in the chat where it is. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I have no idea. I, I, uh, I don't have issues with the gimbal and the mini two and the camera is straight down. 
When I fly with it straight down and back up, the gimbal jumps forward. Um, good question, place it here. I have not had those issues, but somebody may have. If you have, um, oh, Melbourne. Okay, thank you, Ray. Thank you. That's always a that's a possibility. Uh, that, that, that's a that, that, that's what I can give you for right now. That may be a busy time for us because I got some things coming up in February, March timeframe. So I'll let you know, Ray. But that does sound that does sound very very good. So. All right, guys. Well, we're going to kind of wrap things up here because that's all I have for tonight. Um, like I said, I got some mini two stuff we're going to be coming out with. So you guys will see that that'll be, that'll be coming forward. I get any more news on the um, Feeny mini, you know, we'll be sure to post that. Um, you know, we're going to keep an eye out for that new Sony selfie drone that's going to be coming out. And also any info on the Mavic 3. You know, even though that's a ways away, usually, you know, you get leaks here and there and so forth. And I'm also going to ping X Dynamics to see what's see what's going on with them. So I'll keep my ear to the ground. Um, yes, I would. I would really like Stephen Ewing. Thank you for showing up. Stephen Ewing, it's absolutely fantastic to see you on here. We know the de the incredible dedication you have. And and, you know, my, my hat is off to you uh, for doing that. Uh, it's, it's incredible, uh, to stay up <laughs> as late as you are to be able to catch us. So thank you so much, my friend for, for watching us as always guys, you know, if you ever have any questions, especially for you new guys, if you, if you don't know, email me at build a drone reviewer at gmail.com. It's real easy to, to get a hold of me. Um, you know, if you leave me a Facebook messenger, sometimes, especially on the page, sometimes I don't see that because I don't go out to the page. I don't look at the at the messages from the page every day. Um, you know, they, they kind of stay hidden. But if you email me, I check my email multiple times a day. So build a drone reviewer at gmail.com for those of you that, that aren't familiar. If you have a question, concern, uh, want to know something, if I can get you hooked up, I'll try to find the answer for you. If not, I'll get you hooked up with someone who can. So hope everybody has a great rest of your week, a great weekend coming up. And as always, guys, it's a great day to fly. Take care.